Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. This time around, I'm going to be discussing Power Query in Excel and showing you how it might be useful for investment banking and advisory roles. So one common question that we often get about certain features in Excel is the following. I've noticed that you now cover Power Pivot or Power Query or VBA or the internal data models in Excel. Do I need to know this feature? In other words, will it be tested on it in interviews? How could it possibly be useful for deal-based roles like investment banking or private equity? Once again, I'm going to give you a short answer to these questions, and then I'm going to go into Excel and give you a demonstration of how even some basic knowledge of one of these features could save you a lot of time and effort. So the short answer is that you don't need to know these features for interviews, but they can make your life on the job much easier. And you don't need to spend hours and hours learning these features either. Even if you know the basics of how they work, that can be very helpful and save you a lot of time with repetitive data entry, organization, sorting, and filtering type tasks. It is true that you mostly build financial models and valuations in investment banking, private equity, corporate development, and related fields, but you also have to analyze data and find ways to present it effectively. In virtually all these roles, you are going to be building presentations and writing memos and other things like that that will incorporate data that you have to set up in Excel. Now, if the data ever changes or you need to change the layout or the setup or something like that, it could be very time consuming to redo everything unless you have a good framework in place first. So to illustrate how this might be useful, we're going to look at a situation that I encountered the other day in real life when I was doing some financial and tax reporting where I had to look up and classify a company's sales transactions by state. You can see some of the data right here in Excel that I was working with, where I have an annual summary for years one through five. I have the state or province or territory abbreviations. This is for the US, so it's really states and territories. But I did not have the state names over here. Now, this is a harder task than it sounds because yes, you might be able to find lists like this online, but they may not have all the abbreviations you're using. Also, some of the abbreviations could be inconsistent because there are many different abbreviations you could use for US states. You can see it right here on Wikipedia. Something like Arizona could be AZ or it could be Ariz with a period at the end. And then you see the same thing for some of these others. Colorado could be CO or it could be COLO period, for example. So there are various different abbreviations for these states. And so you could be dealing with some inconsistency issues as well. Also in this list, there were some non-standard or less common abbreviations such as MP for the Northern Mariana Islands, AP for the US Armed Forces in the Pacific, for example. One solution, as I said, is that I could have just Googled it and found all the terms and then copied and pasted them into Excel and then done lookups based on that data. But a better solution in this case, and one that would reduce the amount of time and effort I have to spend copying and pasting and cleaning up data, is to use Power Query to pull in and update the data automatically and then look it up directly from this data source. So here, for example, we could just go to the Wikipedia page for the list of US state abbreviations and apply Power Query to this to pull in everything automatically and then write a single function that grabs the proper state name based on the abbreviation. Now, before I jump in and show you how to do this, let me just say in advance that if you're on an older Mac version of Excel, this is not going to work. Power Query is not implemented at all, so you're out of luck. In Mac Office 365, Power Query is there, but it doesn't work for web crawling. It just works on locally stored files as of the, as of the time of this video. So really, you have to be on a pretty recent modern version of PC or Windows Excel, such as in Office 365 or in Office 2016 or 2019 or something like that. If you're on an older version, you can download the Power Query plugin or add-in from Microsoft. Just Google it to find it. Let's go through this step-by-step step now. The first thing we wanna do is go to data in the root menu, then go to get data from other sources from web, and then enter the Wikipedia or other URL we want to use. So let's go here and I will click on data in the root menu, then get data, and then from other sources from web. And let's go and get our Wikipedia URL from right here. I'll paste it in. I'll just go with basic for now and I'll click OK. And now you can see what's happening. Excel is going through this page and it's automatically parsing it and retrieving everything in table format so that we can then import this into Excel and automatically refresh the data. So you can see this first table, which is the main one here for all the state abbreviations. We also have a few other smaller ones here, but really in this case, we care about the first table, the codes and abbreviations for US state, 
federal district, territories, and others. I'll click on transform data now. And now we get something that you may not have seen before. Let me make this window a bit smaller so you can actually see everything in it. This is what is known as the data transformation window or the data editor or Power Query editor within Excel. And what we can do here is tell it if we want to throw out certain columns because we don't need them, or we want to remove certain rows because we don't need them, we can do that before loading this data into Excel officially. Why is this useful? Well, clearly we don't need this first column here for header. So I can just select this control space bar and then I can say remove column. We don't need the second column either, either name and status of region. It's sort of useless here. So let's just go to remove column. The other thing we can do is rename this into something else. So I can just call this one state table, for example. And that's a much shorter name, which will be useful when we write some of our formulas later on. And then looking at this list of abbreviations, we probably don't need every single column right here. So for example, if you look at the USPS column here, for something like US Armed Forces Pacific, which is an example I just gave, or the Northern Mariana Islands. This one for USPS is the only column that actually has the correct abbreviation for those. So really we don't need any of the other columns here. Now in some data sets, if we had a real mix of different abbreviations, for example, we could keep one or two of these other columns. But in this case, I'm actually just going to remove everything here and I'll just go to remove columns. And I'm only gonna keep the USPS column instead. And then I'll delete all these other ones and I'll go to remove columns and we have that. So now we've transformed the data and we have the two exact columns that we want and we have them directly linked to our source and this Wikipedia URL. So now I'll click close and load. And now you can see that we get another spreadsheet here, sheet one. I can rename this one to state abbreviations. And as the name applies, we have our states and we have our abbreviations right here. So now what we can do is go back and we can come up with a simple and elegant way of doing this. I could just write a simple index and match function to this. So I'll do index and then I will select this entire table, state table. For the row number, we need to match the abbreviation. So I'll say match. I will go back here. We'll take our abbreviation from right here. Then for lookup array, we want to take this entire column, the second column in this table. We want an exact match. And then for the column number, we will just enter one there for the first column. Let's copy and paste this down. So control down arrow key, move over, shift control up arrow key, and then alt ESF or command control VF on the Mac to paste this in. And so now we have all of our state abbreviations right here, and they're set up intelligently based on these state abbreviations. And we didn't have to copy and paste anything manually. We didn't have to do any manual data cleaning. It was all handled very elegantly within Excel. Now, I have a list of the steps right here for your reference if you wanna go through them again. I thought it'd be more effective just to demonstrate directly within Excel how to do this. If something ever changes, we can now refresh all the data automatically and keep our transformations in place. So let's say, for example, that the standard abbreviations change or something's added or removed from the list. Well. I can just click on this under queries and connections and I can go to refresh. Everything here gets refreshed. And then everything here also gets refreshed because these formulas are based on this table, which is in turn linked to that underlying data source. So this is how it can be very helpful. Now, obviously US state abbreviations are probably not gonna change frequently. So it doesn't matter too much in this context, but for example, Imagine looking up something like the number of stores by location for a company or the number of employees by location for a company. You could just go to the investor relations section of their site, look it up right there, enter it in Excel, and then whenever it changes or you have to update your presentation, just go back into Excel, go to queries and connections within data, and then right click this and simply go to refresh and you get an automatic update. Then you can just copy and paste everything from Excel into PowerPoint from there. So that's a quick example of how Power Query could save you a lot of time and effort in Excel when you're doing this type of exercise. Let's do a quick recap and summary now. You don't need to know Power Query. You're not gonna be tested on it in interviews or anything like that, but it can be very useful on the job because it eliminates the need to do manual copy and paste from websites and other data sources. And it lets you automatically update spreadsheets based on changes in that data. Even if you're not sure whether or not it's changed, you can just hit refresh and automatically get an update. 
The most common use cases are for things like looking up names and abbreviations, looking up company stores by location, employees or buildings by city, or other data like that that changes fairly frequently, maybe not every day, but every quarter, every year, something like that can be very, very helpful for updating those types of data sets. This took about five minutes to set up and use if you ignore my explanations. There was no programming knowledge required at all, and potentially the ROI, the return on investment, could be quite high for certain types of jobs, especially if you have to manipulate data like this and use it in presentations quite frequently. So that's it for a quick tutorial on Power Query. I hope you now have a better idea of how to use this in Excel and how it can save you a lot of time without having to spend hours and hours learning something new or learning programming or anything complicated like that.